<laughs> oh, forgot to wash the bench down. <sighs> This is going to be a shocker for people. They're not going to be used to me live streaming anymore. Uh, uh, reach over there. It's probably going to take 10 minutes before anyone turns up. Hmm. Not too dirty at all. And Nathan Hopkins is the winner. And John HDN's next. Uh, not really an early start, more of a late finish. It's uh, 11 past midnight right now. Right, get that down. Let's see what's going on with this. Board Eater Alex. Yeah, Joshua Fitzpatrick. Yes, rare sighting. I know things just haven't been right for me to do live streams lately, so it's just the way it goes. In fact, I haven't been able to do many videos lately. Been busy with the software and just getting things done around here. And surprisingly, I get to the end of the day and I've forgotten to record anything. But most of the time, what happens is I record the duds and forget to record the wins. It's, uh, it's pretty typical. Anyway, this machine, a uh, person dropped it off today and they said it makes noises, but doesn't boot properly all the time. I can't see any drop marks on it. So we've either got a hard drive going crazy or we've just got something being sucked into the impeller. It's early when it passes midnight. Oh, all right, okay. Oh, Drabara? And Dragon, yeah, all the usual people here. Let's see. Powers in, powers on. Powering up. I can feel there's a vibration. Yeah, there's a nasty vibration there. And it's not the DVD player. And it's, you got, apart from seeing my bald head, I think it's an impeller. It doesn't feel like a hard drive vibration. The RPMs are too low. It booted. So I think this is hopefully just going to be something stuck in the fan. Which will mean a very boring stream. Okay, you're out of here. Hey, Greg. Motor man. I haven't seen you around for a while. Yeah, you can probably hear it. You're locked. At least you can take the batteries out of these ones. Not much a fan of this trend where they lock the batteries inside the machine. Usually these ones don't have different screw sizes, but uh, I guess we'll see. One thing they do like to do with this particular one is, if I can find my spudger, Fan wobbling off axis, that's probably pretty close, yep. Either that or a creature got in there and remnants of it are now spinning around. Come on. Yep, knew it. Noticed a few companies going back to this dirty old technique of hiding screws under feet. I don't know why. I've had a couple where they put um, a matte finish 
cover over the screw as well. So unless you're in good lighting, you don't catch. Again, they do have different screw sizes. Little bastards. I have to say, though, the worst offender for that I've found to date was a Lenovo machine. I think it must have had about six or seven different screw sizes just to get the bottom panel off. I don't think I bothered putting that one back together. I think it was a dead one. But it uh, was sure a pain was pain to get off. Okay, most of these all look about the same size. Hopefully it's not a colony of ants. I saw something about that today. The food in the... Was that the one where he was saying... Um, public service announcement or something. My scheduling with Lewis's streams has been tr atrocious as of late. It seems it's like he knows when I'm waking up. And as soon as I wake up, he cancels his streams. It's like, uh, I think I've offended him or something. And he's like, oh crap, Paul's awake. Shut down the stream, shut down the stream. I guess it would probably help if I didn't sleep until 11 o'clock in the morning. Though it's more like 10 o'clock. Because <sighs> by 11 o'clock the customers are starting to turn up and they're banging on the door. Hey Cryjay. Uh, let's see, uh, Paulie Lewis, sorry. I'm... Goodness. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, uh, Nathan already got those underfoot ones. Well, doo -doo. You're telling people to quit being nasty after his abuse flex board view. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, good day, cues. Now, sis. No, I'm pretty sure it's top tech. The keyboard's got to come out. This is definitely the one thing I hate about PC laptops. Is that every damn one is different. But in, <coughs> in saying that, I had a uh, new MacBook Retina. The 12 inch one, by cracky they changed that around with the main assembly on the bottom panel and you can't go just ripping it off. wonder how many people have ruined boards with that particular one, trying to open it up like they used to. Oh, do you not jump back down there? I'm pleased to say I didn't destroy the MacBook Retina, but I do have to get a complete replacement top deck. Uh, someone spilled coffee into the keyboard. And, of course, on the upside, it has got screws in it. It's like a hundred odd screws. But, uh, I think it's, the top deck cost me something like seventy dollars more than just replacing the keyboard. I think I'm still just going to go with replacing the top deck entirely, rather than trying to mess around with that keyboard. Hey, Lisa! Oh, good to see you here. Oh, it's really nice to see all the people that used to drop in, drop them back in. So I didn't think this was going to be anything too fancy, but I thought I'd take an opportunity to say hello. Uh, I'm going flat out trying to conjure up enough um, savings in the bank to convince uh, saving yeah to convince them to give me a home loan, and at the same time we've been picking up foster kitties, so we've got uh, we've got a black cat at the moment. He's an old fella, and he came in. And he was on the verge of death. It was just skeleton, skin and bones, nothing more. 
Uh, anyway, he's now fat as anything. Uh, in fact, the vet said to us, you know, you've got to ease up on the food now because he's just porking himself out. He's fatter than all of our other cats. But uh, the down, the trick with the poor chap is that he's got an autoimmune disease. And so we have to give him injections periodically if he starts flaring up too much. Fortunately, he's only had to have one injection. But it makes it difficult for us to try and get him fostered. Because obviously you know, people are going to go, well, we don't want a cat that's got uh, issues. But as long as he's been entertained and fed well, he doesn't seem to flare up so much. So uh, it can be difficult finding homes for older black cats. Alrighty. Anyway, this is off. It took about a hundred times longer than it would for a MacBook. Yeah, John, they are, they all are slightly more unique, yeah, one way or another. But I think the PC laptops, I think just because of the diversity, there's just so many different variants. And it's like they're perpetually trying to find the right way to do the body. I think the Mac style of just the replaceable bottom plate. Yeah, it's still pretty clean, so this has just got to be a bad impeller. Yeah, I can feel it. As I spin it, I can feel it grinding. And naturally, it is... Yeah, you're all plastic sealed, aren't you? Yes, you are. There's no disassembling of this one. No, that's just going to have to be replaced. It's kind of weird, though. I'm going to fire it up. Let's see what it sounds like. I do not know what pins are which on that. Ah, uh, cues, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm running into trouble with the board views because of the fact that... Um, yeah, the data quality from the original sources that I picked it up from, which is the pads files that everybody's been able to use, the data quality is just atrocious. Uh, the iPhone 6 that I'm trying to patch up at the moment, the uh, board view, it has so many mistakes. It's like it's a first release or something like that. Um, a great number of the small parts simply don't exist or they've got the wrong network names, or they're the wrong orientation. But the other ones, like the 5s, the 6s, I've managed to get working all right. I do need to get them out. I guess I'm being a little bit excessively pedantic, um, because once you sort of put them out there, it's a little hard to change them back. Okay, let's be naughty and pull that out. Hmm. It's a little bit grindy, but it's not so bad. Maybe there was just something sitting in there and it's cleared it. No, actually, no, I can still feel it grinding. You know, when you hold these, when you put your hands to these fans and you can feel like they're just chewing on something? So, yeah, I just have to order another one. I'll change that. Hey, John. Come back. Paulie Lewis. We have a small dog that gets a shot every two months. It's not really a big deal. Paulie, what's the shot for? Is that um, also autoimmune or is that some other thing that comes up? Put five volts through the fan. Too late. <laughs> Already put it back in. Hey, Pionov. I did see Pionov in here, didn't I? Somewhere. Um, fluffy footer. 
Yeah, fans chattering too. I can't actually hear the fan with my hearing, uh, but I can definitely feel it when I put my fingers on it. I can feel that it's chewing correctly. So yeah, it's gonna have to go down. And naturally, I don't have. Where's my? Shut this down properly. And of course, naturally, it's on a Thursday evening, so this will not arrive until a Monday morning. Oh, come on. They kick me down. Uh, John, the problem with these fans is that, uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, they're actually welded together, welded shut, so you can't pull them out and you can't do anything with the bearings. There's just nothing you can do. I mean, you probably could, but you probably end up damaging something more. Considering they're probably, what, 20 bucks? Cheaper to get one. Why are you not working you flat? Normally these Logitech mice work straight out of the door. You just plug them in and they go. Your three. You don't want to work. Great. Brilliant. Oh yeah, cool Mac, that's all done. That was done about sorry. That was done about an hour ago now. Oh, jeez. May the elders of the internet forgive me for what I'm about to do. Alright. Guess I have to just put that one aside. And say we need the fan for it. Uh, what? Just cues, you've just done a reflow of CPU socket. Yo. Yeah, I'm not really into that sort of thing. No, I probably should be, maybe I'll make some money, but for me, if it gets to that point, um unless there's a very specific reason, I basically just sort of go that's a uh, write off, go get a new board, something like that. Um Okay. Do I want to put that in there? No, I don't want to put that in there. I'll just shut this down. Put that there. Right. Put that on the shelf. And hopefully I'll remember tomorrow to not lose that. To put the order in. I do need to put my... By the way, I've got my quick hot air station now. So, a cool Mac will be all upset that I did that. Uh, so, this whole thing is now no longer really going to be on daily use. I will keep it somewhere in the workshop. I don't know, maybe I can dry my nails with it or something. Um, it's still a good machine, it's just that when I've, now that I'm doing more work on the MacBooks, it just doesn't have the bite to get me through. Like I tried to take an SMC off with that and it was an, just wasn't going to happen. Hey Armrax, um, uh, let's see, Paul can show the address. I've forgotten where the address is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but the quicks, you know, i got to say, I, I do like... The only thing I don't like about the quick, and I'm sure everyone else has complained about this at some point, is the nozzles. You know, it's just... I much prefer the nozzle style uh, of attaching um, to, of the old one that I've got, where it was just a loose-fit sleeve, and you, you know, this thing. Yeah, where it's just a 
simple Phillips head screwdriver, you tighten it up and that's it. These things with the you have a spring steel grab, whatnot, it's a pain in the butt. I always feel like I'm going to yank it too much and rip the tip completely off or something like that, I don't know. But anyway, it's a bit of a shame that they did that. But that aside, yeah, it's pretty good. I have had people ask me if I'm going to try and modify the firmware for this to see if I can get more than three channels because it does have an Atmel AVR in it. So it should be comparatively easy to do. But i got to admit, I don't really want to mess with it. <laughs> Use it as a bottom heater for doing PS4 ports. Oh, well, there you go. See? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, Crudger, I got the quick. Yep. Uh, send me a PM and I'll send you the address. What? I oh, like it. Here, you can paste it yourself, Cormac. Da, 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 da. There you go. Now you have the power. All right. Still waiting on my angled nozzles. Yeah, I got. I ordered mine with the quick. Um, I got mine from Union Repair. I was going to get it from Lewis, but unfortunately Lewis was unable to get the 220 volt ones. So I've still got the original tips, and as you can see, they have not been used yet. So they're all still pristine. The angled tips, they seem pretty good, but I have a feeling I'm going to end up going back to the straight tip and just holding it at an angle. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's something I'll get used to. I'm not sure yet. It's one of those things where, yeah, you change your equipment and you've got to go through the whole process of relearning everything again. Uh, well, let me look around, see if I've got something I can fiddle with here. I've got a huge stack of iPhones, but... Uh, they're nothing interesting. I didn't really think this one through. Let's see, liquid destroyed. Hmm. I've done all my MacBooks for the day, and unfortunately, the ones that I was expecting for tomorrow aren't going to turn up. So it's a bit of a nuisance. I'm going to a bit of a dead day tomorrow. I guess I'll use it programming. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Hard work without a barlow on the scope. Yeah, I've got a 0.7 on this one, Nathan. Let's see if this works. Channel switcher changes. You need to work? You did. Haha. <laughs> And yeah, one of these days I've got to fix up Lewis's multimeter software, but the trouble is I don't know. Oh yeah, this one, I remember this one now. Completely botched up there. So I might just... The customer doesn't care about this one. I'm sort of getting a bit straight to the point with a lot of my customers. If it comes in water damage like this, I'm not even giving them a, uh, I'm not even giving them a glimmer of a hope or anything. I just sort of go, well, you know, you can either, it's data or nothing and take it or leave it. And then when you tell them the price of the data recovery, they're usually like, we're leaving it. And it's not like I'm pricing it excessively. Like, you know, it's not even, it's only a couple of hundred Australian dollars. But uh, you quickly learn that the value of data for a lot of people is not a lot. It's sort of 50 bucks. Okay. But unfortunately, what often happens is the... Uh, Maurice, he's got a kid, yeah. He's, <laughs> parenthood is what happened to Chris. He does still show up on Facebook. Not very often. But yeah, I'd say the poor guy is uh, really struggling with trying to get things like sleep as a primary priority these days. 
It's funny, when he... Before he... Well, I shouldn't say he didn't have the kid, his wife did. But, uh... Before the family edition, he was something like about a thousand subscribers ahead of me on YouTube. And then Flexboard View happened, and Lewis started chilling the blooming daylights out of Flexboard View. And now I'm like a thousand subscribers beyond Chris. So yeah, I shouldn't have competitions like that, but it's kind of fun in some ways. Uh, speaking of fun stuff, uh, I don't know how many of you follow Jason Vollmer of SDS, but uh, I think he's about to put a new video up, and it'll be interesting because if any of you know what he's been up to, he's moved. He's travelled something like, I don't know, I think it's about a thousand miles or something to a new location, which is really good to see. So he won't be freezing his butt off this winter. So I'm curious to see how he goes with his new workshop. So it seems like in the last couple of months everybody's been up to something. So People think you just plug in something and data comes off. Yep, that's about right, Nathan. Yeah. I mean, if you're really lucky, you will get one of those rare cases where it's like, um, what is it, C2032 or something? I can't remember. I don't do enough iPhones to remember those numbers off by hand like the professionals do. I just get enough to make it frustrating for me to try and remember. What's wrong? Uh, let's have a look at this. This looks like a real mess. Yeah, he's just got to worry about it. Fortunately, I think he's, he's in a place a little bit inland, so it's a bit like where I am. Man, this is a... Oh, sorry, you guys can't see. It's a bit like where I am on the coast here. Oh, sorry, I'm not on the coast. I'm about 100 k's in. And so by the time cyclones strike the coast and make their way up to us, they've lost a lot of their potency. And so I think Jason's in the same sort of situation. Uh, Flooding is probably more the greater issue where he is now. Hopefully it'll take a bit before Jason starts at Swamp Walk-Ins. Yeah, I think he's probably going to try and avoid that walk-in stuff as much as he can. But I guess it, again, it all comes down to the market. I do wonder about people who do iPhones as their primary uh, job. Because with the advent of the... Yeah, more recent iPhones, there seems to be less and less, um, less and less work with it. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my perception is all the, the joyous, easy, profitable, low-hanging fruit has been picked. And if it's not just the market itself, it's uh, the sheer number of people doing it now. Yeah, it's... Um, People like Jessa and others created a, um, yeah, they really sort of spearheaded a bit of a change in uh, a lot of the market. And now a lot of people have picked up and they're absorbing all the easier jobs that would have gone to people like Jessa um, and Chris and or Lewis. So it'll be interesting to see what comes up. I'll also be very curious to see if the iPhone 10 sandwich design lasts to the next iteration. Hey Jacob. Oh wait, I already said that. Uh... Yeah, this is this looks nicely drowned. I'm not sure what actually this went into. doesn't really look like it doesn't look like chlorine pool hopefully it's not toilet water 
Oh man, you're you're ruined. Oh, that's gone. I mean, I don't really care about the camera connector. The good thing is all the important ones are alive. It's like, you know, touch, display, not really, really important, but yeah. Right, let's have a look under the shields. At least now of the quick, it is quick. Uh, the light should flicker pretty good with this. And I just realized I am going to need a nozzle. That's the other thing with the quickers. They didn't really give us an easy way to put the nozzles on. Particularly the angled ones. Now, there's no... You can't get the pressure on it evenly, so you end up swiveling it in. I mean, I know I'm complaining, but yeah, there goes the lights. Between 100. I can never decide which corner I want to grab for this top shield. Put the damn thing back in there. That's the one. God damn, bang my fingers. I can't hold that, it's bang my fingers. Why do you not want to drop off? Alright, give it a time to rest. That didn't want to come off at all. Give it more temperature. This is the other thing I'm finding with the quick is that, uh, well, I said it before anyway. I've got to get used to all the settings. Uh. Yeah, Tim would have had that off ages ago. Yeah. I think I need uh, asbestos gloves or something. I mean, I know that shield's hard to get off, but that was that should have come off ages before then. Oh well. I mean, I take off a fair number of them because I often do the baseband CPU on them. 
Yeah, so that's no problem. No, it wouldn't be difficult. Oh, I know why it's not working. It's, um, I should have realized this. It's because I'm on live stream. They've had to redesign the quick this year, the internals. Uh, what reason are they having to redesign it? And... Yeah. To what point and purpose, as it were. And the only thing I can really, what I would have liked to have seen them do is have it with more presets and rotary encoders rather than the damn up-down buttons. I hate the up-down buttons. You've got to shit me. You're at 480 and you're still not dropping off. Something's not... Something's going on there. Well, I don't think it's actually... That's the thing. I don't think the quicks produce interference. I think it's just that they... What's happening is they just hit the power so hard. Because they just simply go for... Get up to temperature now. Um, I suspect the coil in the heater is... Of extremely low resistance relative to... Other stations. Yeah. Because I remember when I was designing a reflow oven for uh, my manufacturing. This is when I was cheap and nasty. Oh wait, oh, I'm still cheap and nasty. Um, and my first couple of attempts were to use, I think I had a 2.5 kilowatt rated element, and I would, um, I would bang bang moderate that. So basically, what you do is you switch on and off on the half cycle of the zero crossing, rather than trying to do a like a partial wave because in theory you know if you do a if you turn it off on or off ah this is who cares about this this is this is a junk phone i'm just trying to work out what's being attacked in it <clears throat> yeah if you particularly if you shut off the load part way through the waveform that's when you get the nasty emi issues but even though i was bang banging it uh, or zero crossing rather, it would still produce a tremendous amount of flickering on my lines, and it was just simply because of the high um, the high power drain. Well, surprisingly, there's no actual damage under there, and this is all clear here. So even though, I've, oh crikey, you guys can't see anything. Yeah, there's no, there's no real damage up here, so it seems to be all just along this top bit here. And now me just reflowing it, of course, with the extreme heat. Actually, it doesn't look like anything's reflowed there, so it's all good. Now, I do not know why this doesn't want to come off. 
I said, I know these are hard to get off, I'd do them, but that really wasn't budging. And there's a fingerprint on there. And a very, that's not too badly melted. It's not great, but it's not too bad. Maybe it's the cold weather we have here at the moment. It's uh, around about, oh, I think uh, it's probably about 55 Fahrenheit at the moment. Freezing cold weather. So I'd say whatever's causing this type of drama must be... It could just be shorted up in there. Alright, we'll pick away at that. So I haven't done any proper diagnosing here with this. I'm just simply going by visuals. It's more for entertainment value while I'm here rather than anything else. You don't need to be there. Turn on the extractor. By the way, if anyone was waiting for the um, Mac OS version of uh, Flexboard View. It is out, but the trouble is that the PDF viewer does not have a uh, what is it the touchpad if you're using it on a MacBook. The touchpad doesn't convey the um, scrolling for zooming. And that's in spite of the fact that I'm using the Mac GLUT library. So I'm having to re-encapsulate the whole PDF viewer into a new library, a new um, toolkit. Which interesting enough will end up making it more like open board view and flex board view in appearances. But I have to say, it was really nice of Lewis to go out of his way to do all the promotions. Although it's quite painful to wake up in the morning and catch up on a live stream or the end of a live stream and hear him cussing away at it. So I was like, oh, whoops. And then I spend the whole day trying to fix the issue. And the issue is often the easier part. The hard part is getting Lewis to update it. But... That's just the way it goes. Okay, I'm going to clear away some of this underfill, overfill. If this was a MacBook, I'd probably consider, yeah, bringing it back to life. Try and, um, yeah, maybe keep it for myself or something like that. But since it's an iPhone, this is forever going to be a donor board and nothing more. I don't know how many of you out there resell refurbished iPhones after they've been water damaged, but uh, I certainly. I can't do it to myself because I'm always wondering the next time I get a message from that person is it to say my phone stopped dying I only just bought it from me six years ago 
Why isn't it fix? Why is it doing this? You said it was going to be good. No, I just don't trust water damage on the iPhones. But on the MacBooks, yeah, I've fixed up a few and sent them on their way and they're fine. I think it's just the outrageous part density of the iPhones that makes them so susceptible to recurring issues after the initial damage is done. You guys can't see that. I need to make a video as well for how to make my fume extractor because it's actually quite a simple fume extractor. It doesn't need any big hoses or anything like that. It's basically just a box holding a fan and a filter. Okay, I'll give this a wash down. Here's your beta tester. Best tester? Yeah, he is certainly very good at testing. I'll definitely grant him that. And he's very good at promoting. He's very good at testing, very good at promoting. Dreadful at updating. I mean, that multimeter software, you all noticed how it glitches. You know, it sort of keeps going M, 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 or, yeah, just flickering back and forth. Uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, suspecting it's the multimeter serial data communications that are at fault. And when I say at fault, what I mean is that uh, it seems like it needs to, it's not sending one of the bits of information every frame, it's sort of like every second frame, because the ADC, the analog digital converter, doesn't seem to clear that bit until the second, um, the second iteration. And I think that's why the original software that he had was so slow, because they were aware of that limitation, and so they... <laughs> The way they got around it is just simply to ignore it um, until the second frame came along or something like that. So there must be, there's a bit difference somewhere in there. And unfortunately I don't know what it is because I've got no data. And no one seems to have, other than Lewis, no one seems to have one of those BK390 meters. So I can't test. Bush Mechanic. Oh, that's a great show actually. Yeah. Quick Global... AMRAX, yeah, I've, I've seen the fume extractor, and I think it's a nice little off well, it's not a little offering. It's a nice offering because it actually hits a pretty good price point. Uh, the reason why a lot of people don't get the fume extractors, particularly here in Australia, is because they're absurdly expensive. We're talking like a thousand bucks easy, and that's about 800 US for, you know, something like the Hacko one that Lewis uses. Um, the cheapest one I ever saw was a Metcal one, and that was about uh, it was about seven eight hundred dollars. But the downside of it was that it doesn't have a very strong draw. Uh, it just simply you know doesn't drag the fumes away quite as effectively, and from such a large area as say like this one does, or probably what the Hacko one does. ZXW stopped working. That's no good. Wait, is that the one you should have licensed? And I've still got ZXW working. I just don't trust the damn thing. I mean, I know because I build the EXEs for uh, Open Board View and Flex Board View. And because I don't have a official Microsoft registered uh, key or anything like that, then Microsoft will of course report that the software is from an untrusted source. You know, do you want to do this? And of course they make sure that you don't get to see that unless you press the right buttons. But at least it generally doesn't come up saying this is a virus and I'm fairly sure ZXW and EasyDraw do have some malicious payloads in them. And I'm not saying that um, 
Yeah, I was saying that before I even went commercial with the software. There's probably key loggers or something in those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Messing around, messing about on the river. Yeah, that looks good. <clears throat> but I will say the biggest thing that put me off ZXW and EasyDraw for this matter is the whole uh, constantly required to be on and the data never sits on your machine at all and I can understand why they did it but it's also a major pain in the butt but in fairness for the amount you pay for ZXW you do now particularly in the last six months or so you get an extremely comprehensive uh, set of files or data with it something that I'm simply not going to be able to uh, match with things like Flexpoint View. The, rain, the main reason being is that I need the source files. Like, so if they accidentally fall into my mailbox, either in um, ODB format or yes, whatever, um, then great, I can do something with them. But that aside, yeah, there's not much hope for me. I do have other plans so for flexboard view I've, in what it will do about that's probably going to be six months away at least all right let's start probing around here and see what we can find checking out a few of these caps uh use a virtual pc well i w actually tried that and that's actually good thing you mentioned that rx because that is one of the things that annoyed me so I put it in a virtual PC and it didn't want to run so it knows when it's not running 0.32 that's okay 0.266 that's a little low okay you're fine hmm let's see if this thing even boots Use a VNC to get into the virtual machine if needed. What I ended up doing was I set up a dedicated physical machine and simply VNC'd into that. It's not the greatest way to do it, but yeah. But I would have preferred it if I could just simply have it as a virtual box. But that didn't happen. Uh, even better yet, if it could have run in wine, that would have been really nice. Oh, you're showing a normal current now. Hmm. Oh, I always forget which pins on these are. Someone want to remind me what... Nah, I'll find it myself. So I can never remember which two pins to short on these. Stay put, damn you. So anyone remember which two pins? I think it's a... The first one and the first one on ground, or uh, I'll just have to open up. Easy Draw works in Wine, but ZXW will not work in anything but uh, a proper Windows machine. What OS do you need a key for? Uh, no, no, I don't need a. Hey, Vladimir. Actually, I don't know if I've pronounced that correct. I mean, I. I say V's as an F because of the Germanic influence, but um, yeah, so apologies if that's not pronounced correctly. I suspect it's not. Let's see. I'm just going to bring up my board view.
Come on, come on. Sorry, I haven't got things set up in Open Broadcaster. You guys are just going to have to live with that. Let's see. Close enough. Alright, this will work. Okay. Yeah, this is the iPhone 6 board, and you can see it's missing all sorts of things. And things like this connector, that's all wrong. It's missing about six pins or so. Yeah, anyway. Let's see. Hold key. Right, so it is that one. Cool. Hey, Slider. Uh, Rick Tech, Chris has got a kid. He's a parent now, so, yeah. He's got to be all mature and responsible and look after newborns, which is why I don't have newborns. Instead, I've got cats, which take up almost as much time. We're also trying to get... Uh, there's a female cat that's in the neighbourhood... And she's been coming over here for food. And she's got kittens, and we know where they are, but we can't get access to them, which is really distressing us. Um, we don't know what's going on. We're legitimately concerned that we may be too late. Okay, 112, 115. No, this is... This is stuck at 115 million. Oh wait, no, I just saw that to jump to my th where it's doing some sort of weird cycle. But it's not normal, that's for sure. But 400, 300, 200, 100, back down, reboot. Alright, I don't know what to make of that. I'm not good enough with these ones. Catching ship Duke again? Oh, yeah, Duke was trolling me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's um, he's a dedicated Landrex guy, and um, I have to applaud him for that. That takes a certain degree of um, certain degree of satomachism to do. I mean, really, why would you keep hitting yourself on the head with Landrex like that? I remember using Landrex. I mean, I was using it for a little while, and then when Chloridite released the initial version of open board view back before I stuck my dirty fingers into it um, yeah I mean we all jumped over to open board view it was like a it was a revelation to not have this obscure piece of software that would misinterpret what you'd expect to be normal key presses and things like that yeah, there's a bit of junk in there I don't think this junk is causing cool, it but Maybe I should just ultrasonic it. Isn't that the way to do everything? So, yeah. There's an alien life form there. So, yeah, I, I give him props for sticking with it. What I really do like about Duke is just the amazing amount of knowledge he's got in his head. Yeah, he just seems to rattle off all the figures and numbers as if he is the Google for it. Um, Pernov, you're another one like that. I've, I've seen your discussions on the Discord. And you just seem to know everything about every damn board that's been made. And you go, oh yeah, that's this fault and that fault and all that. And I'm like, how do you know this stuff? For me, I'm more like, I'll go Google that and I'll be back in 20 minutes. And then I'll forget it the next day. <laughs> Did I see Rick Vandermark? Ah, Rick. Good to see you. 
Uh, Rick, did you get to see the um, postcard license that I was talking about? Like I said, it sort of predates predates open source, but um, yeah, back in the BBS days, that's what we did: we'd send each other postcards. Like very romantic. Yeah, it straight away goes up to about one twenty. And then sits there for sit, 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 sit. And jumps up to 200, 400, 500, 300, 200, 100, and back down. I don't think I should worry about this one. I think we'll just make this one a donor pile. I'm sure it's something simple. And I'm sure someone who does this every day will be going, It's just this. Well, I don't know what it is. And it's getting late, so it's probably time for me to call it quits. It seems like I didn't really achieve much at all. We've got a fan that doesn't spin properly, and we've got an iPhone that doesn't work properly. Oh well. Let's see, we're going to switch back to... Yeah, that's better. Working on SE with the zero arm short to ground on VCC main, even when ejecting current, nothing gets warm. Waiting on replacement chips. Sounds like you've got a really good short, probably quite close to the, um, quite close to the connector. That often is the cause. Yeah, it was, uh, when I saw that postcard come into the letterbox, I thought, well, someone from my past finally caught up with me and found me after all these years. And then I saw it was your name on there, and I was like, well, that is so cool. Um, so, yeah, I really like getting that sort of postcard thing because it's um, it's a, how could you say, uh, it's a non-imposing type of way of saying hello, and there's no expectations on it. You know, it's like if someone sends you a really pricey piece of equipment or something and sort of says, here you go, yeah, this, you kind of like feel a little bit guilty about it. You're not sure what you're expected to do for it or anything like that. Whereas when you get the postcards, it's just something, you know, you can stick it up on the wall and like, or on a map of the world or something like that. Um, so it's a nice throwback to the simpler times where you didn't have to be worried about what people were thinking too much. Let's see. What are the Discord channels? Uh, I don't know what the links are, but I'm, I'm sure someone must be able to uh, link you to it. I've just this morning decided to stop being on Discord quite as much. It uh, sucks up a lot of time. Uh, and I really need to be focusing on getting this software finished. I need to get these board views. I'm thinking I might just put the iPhone boards out as they are. in Because the data is already of, particularly on, the, say, the 6 because it's already of such poor quality, um, I may as well just put it out as is with a note that it's poor quality. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, there's no point in me really investing too much time into it. Because, I mean, I can't do anything with them. I can't distribute them. I basically have to let them fall off the back of a truck. Uh, so, yeah. Yep, the idea of a oh, quick hello, nothing too fancy. Yeah, well, it worked. It was great. I really, really liked that. Send you one from Finland. Yeah, by all means, yeah, send them in. It's great to get the postcards. It's really cool. Uh, let's see. Lewis, yeah, Lewis's Discord. It's a pretty busy channel. So long as people don't put in at everyone in there, it generally behaves pretty good. Uh, I think that's what it was. I think it was this morning or yesterday that sort of pushed me over the edges. Um... Lewis was being humorous and he linked everybody in and like thousands of people come piling in and I was just like, oh man, I've got to go and just do some real work rather than sitting here and pretending to work. Uh, so what do we got? It's quarter past one. Yeah, I need to wrap this up. I've got to go do a little bit of coding and then do some administration work. Uh, tax time is coming up for Australians. And we need to get all that sort of paperwork sorted out, try and decide should spend money or keep money. Uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you all for jumping in. I know it wasn't really a very productive uh, stream, but uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, things will pick up and improve as I sort of get the workflow back to normal. 
obviously a lot of time has been invested in doing the software so I haven't been able to put that into doing the videos but uh, like I said I appreciate you all popping in and I'll catch up for you later I'll see you